man, <laughs> my truck is getting grumpy in its old age. <laughs> Never fails. This thing seems to be getting particular and only likes me driving it here lately. So I lent this out to my son and his girlfriend so they could move some boxes into their new apartment. And it had been sitting for a while, needed to jump the battery, but it started right up <laughs> like it usually does. And then after a couple starts and stops, it wouldn't turn over anymore. Still won't. And it is an issue that I have been fighting for years. And I am bound to determined to fix it once and for all this time. It is the common Chevy small block strutter issue. Uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of things that cause this. And it is really annoying. So we'll take a quick peek under the hood. I'll give you a quick rundown on how these are set up and then the plan on what we're going to do to fix it for good hopefully okay i'm not sure how good you'll be able to see this there we go so as you can see kind of these starters one they're just really big and they are really close to the exhaust and to top it off I'll go into more detail there are three wires going to these uh, you've got the one coming from the battery which in this setup is always hot and then you've got uh, your trigger wire and then one that's kind of an accessory um, typically used on the earlier models for um, point style ignition or um, the HI 12 volt um, I won't I won't go into the super fine details on the exact wiring and all that here um, but anyways the big problem is is how close everything is to, to the exhaust um, these just get heat soaked and the inner workings of the solenoid in particular just go out i have put so many starters into this thing it's ridiculous again i, I should have fixed it for good a long time ago but uh I don't know why I haven't. I think just <laughs> not whining. Just it's always like an emergency. Like I just I need the damn thing to run and and goes a new struck. Um, in addition to the strutter issues, it's also an installation issue. Those two tiny wires are such a pain. Either you got to try and get them on before and then get the strutter up into place without dropping it and breaking those wires, or you got to try and get those wires hooked up afterwards. So we're gonna take care of that as well. Now, I've already done some work in hopes that it was another issue. I've got brand new positive and negative battery cables on here, um, two gauge. Uh, the other ones were questionable. Um, having a good ground at the motor is definitely extremely important. Um, and the battery, the battery cables were just looking kind of um, old. Maybe uh, it looked like they were starting to get some corrosion on the strands. So we replaced those. The battery, it's not in the greatest shape, um, but it is still serviceable. Uh, and, it, and this isn't working even with a large jumper on it. Uh, the jumper I use for starting like um, the big diesel motors uh, without any issue. Um, it's just a matter of the starter having issues. So let's go take a look at the solutions that we're going to employ to hopefully fix this once and for all. Okay, first here's a close-up of all the wiring that goes to these things. There's there's no wires attached, but I just want to give an idea. So you got your main battery, which again is always hot, and then you've got a couple small wires coming in, depending on the application, and uh, not a lot of room in there at all. So there's three causes for all this. One is just simple heat. Sometimes the heat shield's enough. Um, not typically from what I understand. Uh, another solution is to put a high torque mini starter in. It's smaller further away from the exhaust components and typically they're better quality components and usually that can take care of it. And another solution is to install a Ford style remote solenoid so that all you have coming down is the um, 
main battery cable, which with that setup is no longer hot, and you just bridge these with a little plate. Um, and basically you've got basically two inline solenoids for the starter, um, but you're not having to worry about those little wires getting hot and um, things like that. So I am taking the <laughs> shotgun blast approach uh, and for a few reasons. You can get all these jigs and semi are both really popular uh, sources for a lot of parts, especially for these older things. I don't have any particular preference. Um, I just went with Summit because it was, um, I don't know, it was a twin cost, really. Um, no particular reason. It, it just seemed a little bit easier to find everything I wanted in one place. So uh, I am getting the Summit Racing Mini High Torque Starter for this application. It's got a lot of nice features. You can clock it in different positions. It's got a couple different options for mounting, and it's like a third smaller. Um, I am also getting their solenoid kit. Uh, this will go on the firewall. Those little tiny wires will run to here, and then this will have its own wire going down to the starter. The wire currently going to the starter will go to this, and that, that does a few things. One, it gets the little wires away from the heat and makes installation way easier. Um, it's looking like I can just bolt this up and then hook up the one wire from under the hood. I don't even have to try and do it, you know, from underneath and while it's mounted. Um, this will also keep any live wires from being down by the exhaust. It just adds a safety feature. So uh, the the power coming from the battery is only there when this solenoid on the firewall is activated. So any other time, it's just dead wires. There's nothing going to them. So it makes it safety. Uh, uh, makes it safer. And then I'm also doing a heat shield around the new starter just for cheap insurance. Um, I'm going with this little Velcro run. Seems pretty universal. Um, and it, it's got some insulation to it. So I am, I'm just going to throw all three solutions at it once and hopefully I will be done with this. So as soon as these parts come in, um, I will uh, kind of walk you guys through what I end up doing and um, we'll see how it works. Real quick, something I want to point out um, that I forgot to. The, the cost of all these parts came to after sh tax, shipping was free, after tax, it was like $207. Uh, that, that's another reason I went with Summit, thinking back to it, um, that you could get one of these, from what I understand, these are really reliable starters. They're built, built really well. Um, but also they kept in mind, um, they wanted them to be competitive for, you know, most people to be able to use them. I mean, you look at this, you go to Napa and these are what I've been getting just, you know, I think I've tried everything from the remanufactured, which you can see here that that alone is <laughs> costs more than, than one of these other ones. Um, I've done new, uh, I've tried all these options, but as you can see, you can get starters at, at a local parts store. Um, anywhere from about 70, 80 bucks to, um, I'm not sure what this deal is. I don't think, I don't know what application that's for, but typically I'm spending around that same amount. I'm usually spending about a hundred bucks, $150. It just depends, um, on a starter for these when I have to do them. And again, I, I've lost track of how many of these I've replaced. It's, it's never been so often that I've really felt the need to do all this other conversion work um, until here recently. It seems like I have been going through about a strutter a year for two or three years now. So I'm just, I'm done with it at this point. But the, the thing I wanted to make clear is that to switch all of this over to a better, s uh, simpler, safer system uh, is not much more than just going down to the local parts store and getting a starter. And the nice thing is, is that aside from this little bridging plate right here, there's no other modification at the starter. So if 
something did fail on a parking lot later on, you could go to the nearest parts store, get a regular starter, and still be able to throw it in without any issues. So um, that's just a couple other reasons that I'm going with this uh, approach. And again, we'll see how it turns out. All right, Christmas came early. Let's see what we got here. Okay, the parts from Summit are here. out of the way so okay we've got the heat shield looks like solenoid kit yep very good and then this must be the main starter Tell you, it's way lighter than a typical strutter. I would never have been able to do that one-handed if it were a full-size one. So that's nice. This will definitely be easier to install. So, all right. Well, see what it takes to get this all installed. Okay. So first thing I'm going to cover in this installation is the wiring of it. So here you can see where instead of going straight to the starter, we're putting this solenoid in between. And then our switch wire, the yellow one, is going to come to here instead of here. And the ignition wire, which is the purple, would go here. And then what they do is they have this little plate, which is pretty slick, that's going to make that bridge. So we've got power here, but we never have power down at the starter at all, except for when we are actually starting. For some reason, Summit has a separate set of instructions for the mini starters, where you're basically, you're bridging the two together. So you're, you're still going battery voltage straight to there, and then you're using this other side for your trigger with a tank gauge. I, I don't I don't see the reason for that. And I don't understand what, what the reasoning is. I want this to be able to swap back and forth, where all I've got to do is add this to an OE starter, and the installation is the same, and that there's no power wires down there except for during starting. So I did call them. Uh, they got a phone number you can call. It took forever to get through. Um, but I did call them, did verify it. There was no issue in doing this because, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. I couldn't see a reason for it, but I wanted to verify. And so what I've done is where our battery cable coming from via the solenoid will go, I've made my own jumper using the 10-gauge wire they provided with the kit. Uh, the kit... The wiring kit's just okay. I mean, it comes with the, the jumper plate, which is nice. You don't have to fabricate that out of a shim or something. It's got some wires, which look plenty fine. Um, but they're using super cheap connectors. I, I like heat shrink styles, so I used my own with the heat shrink. But anyways, all I've got is an eyelet and a short wire, but not so short that it's difficult getting in here and I can't position this how I want it. And um, just going to the spade terminal, because that's what's different on the back of these, is you've got your main battery and it's not a post with a nut, it's just a, sp a spade connector. So I've basically replaced the jumper plate with this jumper wire. So that is the first thing that I've run into, an alteration I've made for this installation so far. Oh, the other thing is, I really like, I'm sorry, I like this little insulator. It is definitely made for a big starter. So, sorry about that, guys. All right, anyways, what I've done is, I've got the Velcro closure, and you've got all this flap left over. It's quite a bit. Um, so here we've got it sitting closer to how it will. 
and there's quite a bit of overlap. And you could just cut it off, I imagine, but then, I don't know, maybe this edging will start fraying and all that. But I actually like having the two layers over the solenoid. So what I've done is I've taken a hole punch, um, mainly I use it for like leather and stuff like that, so that I can use a couple of small zip ties and just secure the end of this so it's not flopping around down there and it's secure. Um, I think the zip ties will be fine down there. I think, I think with this being the smaller starter, we'll be far enough away from the heat. I don't want to use anything metal just, just in case. Like I don't want to rub it on this wire or accidentally somehow touching one of our connections in there. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try zip ties and, and hope it works. Um, you could also just do one big zip tie around it, but um, I didn't like that idea either. So I'm gonna try a couple small zip ties and uh, see if they hold up. I think they will. Um, so anyways, these are the alterations I've made so far to get this installed. Okay, got this new starter installed and the solenoid switch upgrade done. Um, had to get it done, even though it's a cold morning and I'm out at the street doing it. Uh, we need to get our Christmas tree and uh, neither of the cars has a roof rack. So anyways, um, I will get this camera flipped around and show you guys what, what I ended up with. Okay, so first of all, this thing cranks over really fast. It sounds like it might be catching just a little bit, but I'm gonna run it for now because it all seems shimmed properly. Um, I will say I was disappointed with the instructions that came with the starter. They looked like the instructions to any starter that I've ever gotten out of parts house. There was nothing specific about their installation. And in watching some of their videos on YouTube, they were supposed to have some very specific instructions because there's things like you may have to shim that strutter in and out from the mounting block um, in addition to up and down on the block. None of that info. I had to go online and find all that. Um, and that'll be covered in um, some pictures coming up pretty soon here where I'll go over some of the, the closer close-up details. Um, this is where the solenoid ended up being. And I like it because all the wiring reached. All I had to do was go get another two foot battery cable, uh, another um, heavy gauge. Um, these are what were going down to the starter. Way down there, they were part of this harness here. I was able to separate them and then wrap them back up um, both separately using some fabric um, wiring harness tape. Uh, I put a little clamp there and I put a clamp there and then the original clamps so the closer one is holding the one from the battery and it loops around to this side and then this one goes down through you can see the bolt right there it goes through the um there you go it goes through the original clamp going down to the starter uh the only thing i don't like oops the only thing i don't like about the location is um i i have to remove this and kind of hang it up here to get access to this top of the starter dock so what i what i found is pretty easy is i, I remove those two um, back spark plug wires and and hang them up here up out of the way um, and then I just kind of shoot through there and I can get to um, all the wires I can actually get to all three of the wires on the OEM setup the inner innermost one was a real pain in the butt um, but and so for this new installation with the one wire deal there's just the one to get to um, so all you have to do when you're underneath is focus on getting that thing mounted. And again, I'll, I'll have some pictures coming up of, of what I did. I may do some more tinkering with the uh, final shimming and adjustments on stuff. Um, we'll just see 
we'll see how how it goes but it definitely does crank over a lot better um and starts now <laughs> so uh yeah definitely yet another dead starter um this is a a napa starter bought less than a year ago and uh yeah just tired of doing this so frequently i'm hoping this will last a lot better getting this all away from the heat um i did have to change the clock of the starter within the mounting plate uh to clear the exhaust it was still really really close but the nice thing is is that we no longer have the wires right next to the exhaust um, and the solenoid itself is further away from the exhaust so all I have left to do now is see if I can get that cover wrapped around it okay so bear with me on the sound I did not bring my microphone down with me and did not want to crawl back under here again to, <laughs> to take this video so I was able to get this heat shield wrapped around pretty good got it secured with a couple uh, zip ties barely see it on that side um, I went ahead while I was down here and added a shim and uh, when I head back up I will see if it sounds any better even though it measured out okay I didn't like the way it sounded um, I do think it's coming further in just a little bit more than previous starters so that could be what I'm hearing it was still within their designated. They want it like two thirds to three quarters of the way across. Um, and I was at the three quarters mark. Um, but maybe that's all I'm hearing. I'll see how it sounds with the other shim. Um, but I do like the way this heat shield went uh, around. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. So I'll go see how it sounds. Okay, back with my microphone. This probably sounds a lot better. Uh, the starter did not sound any better though. It sounded about the same. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. I really think it's just cause it's going in a little bit more. I could take it back out and add the shim um, to move the starter back in the mounting plate. Um, but it's it, it doesn't sound horrible. <laughs> so I'm not gonna put myself through all that. I, I may kick myself later, we'll see. One point I didn't mention earlier is the wiring i got these confused in my head at some point i could have sworn yellow was the trigger for the starter and purple was the um accessory or on some of the systems it's for the ignition um and so this is your accessory side this is your trigger side but it, it did not end up being that way um, this thicker one is the one that is on the starter position, and the yellow is the key on. Uh, this doesn't do anything for me. Um, all it does do is add another accessory point. Um, so, you know, in the future, I don't have to come straight to my battery for some of my add-ons. Um, currently, I've got, uh, this is my amp. And this is for uh, this little rodent guy, which I can turn back on now. Um, that was one of the things when we moved to Washington we had to combat. Um, so anyways, yeah, now I've got another point here to be able to hook up accessories if I want. Um, so, yeah, again, I, I had that backwards. I could, could have sworn it was the other way around, but it did not turn out to be that case on mine. Okay, real quick, I want to go over a little bit more in detail on some of the alterations that I had to make. So here, I've got a picture of the original wiring. And you can see where it's in this little clamp here coming down. You can also see that the tape has long since uh, been heat soaked itself and fallen away. So... Um, Anyways, that's just at the back of the engine going to the starter. And this is me just getting in with a little cotter pin tool and opening that clamp up and just sliding the wires um, out of that, that hook. And then from there, I just separated the two. 
that I needed from the rest of the wires going down. Um, and then I just re-taped both halves of it with some, some of that cloth uh, wiring tape. Uh, and then I just used one of the heater, heater box bolts to add a little clamp to secure it nicely and run it on down to the solenoid. Um, I did look this up again and um, was was right. Uh, the so the these pictures are wrong. <laughs> this is before I knew I had it wrong, um, but I did I did have it reversed. The purple is what um, comes from the start position of your ignition switch and engages the starter, and then the yellow is just a smaller Keon accessory. So um, just want to clarify that. Okay, here you can see how close, even with the mini starter, this uh, starter ended up being. Now this is the starter body and not the solenoid. So the solenoid is up further um, and in closer to the block um, after I clocked it. And it is, um, so the solenoid itself is further away from all the heat. Um, it's usually, those are what really get hit hard with the uh, with the exhaust. Here's a better shot of how it kind of fit in there. One thing I want to point out before I forget again is uh, I did properly torque these 35 foot pounds. I cleaned the the base plate of the you know the block mounting surface. Um, did all that so it had good, good ground and a flat mounting surface and then I actually torqued it properly instead of just zipping it off and zipping it back. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. So here you just take a little flat blade screwdriver and you can work this um, toothed gear out to check the depth. So it should go two thirds to three quarters across the thickness of the flywheel. This one was uh, right, right between those two, maybe a little closer to three quarters. You can also see how filthy my transmission is. Um, and then again, th these things that I'm talking about now, supposedly we're supposed to be in the instructions from Summit. If you go to YouTube, they have a little installation video where they cover some of this stuff and then they clearly reference and be sure to check our instructions. Um, but the instructions I got were just generic starter instructions. So between their video and some further research, I figured out, um, what, what it is that they're looking for. So in addition to how far across the flywheel you go, you should also be able to, um, oh, incidentally, I'm sorry. Um, that adjustment is made by putting a shim between the starter and their, their mounting block. And then they want, um, to make sure you've got the correct gap between the teeth as well. So basically what you want to do is use a paper clip to check between um, the, the depth between the teeth. So the the top of the drive gear gear and the valley of the flywheel and make sure that you can fit a paper clip in there. Um, if not you add, add shims to increase that and and so forth. Th that's it. Those are the, the little details that I wasn't able to capture on video. Um, and so now we'll go back to the video. Anyways, we will see how this works down the road. This is the Chevy 350 small block starter conversion to a mini torque starter and a remote solenoid on the green truck, our 72 Chevy C10.